Um, but but thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have uh, these are uh, you know towards the end of the evening more reflective sessions that we hope to have uh, this evening on the Horizons CII uh, joint venture. Uh, we discussed India Africa. There are different tie-ups that are being discussed during this conference. But India Africa one is one if I may say so does not get the kind of um, uh, the kind of attention really it should. Uh, because there is this idea of romance, of the idea of the South South Corporation, of the struggle against colonial forces, uh, that has has defied, in a sense, being updated over the decades into something new. In fact, India-Africa ties are stronger than ever in the last few years. In, I think 2018, we saw a 22% jump when it came to trade. Um, but there's so much that hasn't yet been done, and that's something we want to discuss in the next 45 minutes as we discuss the case of symbiotic development. Um, you know, uh, 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 I, I do want to start with this quote from Nelson Mandela because I think it, it, it puts it in context. Uh, even though Africa is a continent and India is a um, is a uh, uh, is a country, uh, the truth is there has been a sort of common memory. Of, of the two of them. And then, as Nelson Mandela said, uh, he really called it the golden spread that had been woven in the common struggles against injustice and oppression. Of course, today, in, in today's day, we, um, when we speak about um, injustice and oppression, we're talking about the first world and how it dominates international and multilateral organizations. In a way, perhaps um, India and Africa should come together much more uh, to fight against. Uh, joining us uh, today to talk about just where the potential is, as well as where the um, uh, where the uh, hindrances are, because we want to make this a realistic session. We would like to have real points of view coming through. Um, joining us this evening are uh, Ibrahim Zimba Saidu, who is the Minister and Special Advisor to the President of Niger. Um, we have with us uh, uh, Ms. Lucia Lutumu, the Minister of Industry industrialization and trade in Namibia. And uh, from India, we have General V.K. Singh, uh, the Minister of State for Road Transport and Highways. He's been our army chief. He's also handled the Ministry of uh, External Affairs portfolio, uh, where he did actually travel uh, 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 back and forth to several African countries. Um, so I, I'd like to start, if I may, with Mr. Gimbal Saibu and ask you for your thoughts on where you think this relationship, as I said, between a continent and a country uh, has come, how far it has come, and where do you think it really has not yet really kept up its potential? Okay, thank you very much, and uh, good evening or afternoon to you um, uh, Actually, when we, when we take a moment to really look at the state of the relationship between India and the uh, on one hand, um, I think a lot has been uh, happened because even uh, it's been a long lasting relationship between both continents, for instance, as a, a large uh, group of uh, Africans of the origin to this country. So this has been going on for a long time. But when you look at the relationship between what should be, from the views of the Western uh, in my view, uh, the relationship uh, should focus more on really, on one hand, what maybe, uh, let's say, some sort of competitive advantage India has, and uh, matching what we do need from the country. Uh, for example, as uh, uh, far as the majority of them, uh, I see uh, a lot of media in India. And India is also more or less like a country. When you travel in India, you can see that. Uh, I mean, it's like the most value of, uh, of possibility. So I see a sort of new uh, representation. So there is a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, experience. Uh, uh, and so we that actually India is a person. Uh, so the, the relationship between my group is more action oriented, more focused on pure development. Uh, 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 aspect of goal uh, instead of at a time being uh, at a similar level, it's uh, 
Google. So project structure for now, I mean, but uh, in, 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 in my view, there is more that can be done. Uh, in everything we uh, experience the experiences that uh, India has, and also really, really the size of India, that, uh, you can nearly see uh, a group of the African continent in one or two parts of India. So India could be a part of super lunar, let's say, uh, for the African continent. I think you're mute. I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, you ended by saying that you think that there is a potential for India. Uh, definitely, there is a potential for India. I think in India, and I'm sure of India, in the country. On, 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 on one, uh, one hand, I know. Mean, I, I, uh, Maybe it's not my question, but we more or less have the same color than India. I don't know if it's for the flag of India. And the flag of India is uh, exactly the same except for the job in the middle. Uh, but job aside, I think it's really, uh, there is a potential for India. I, I, I traveled with India last year. Uh, I was in Colombiana, so I was in Delhi also. I mean, I've seen uh, really concrete. I have visited villages in Telangana. Which remind me uh, lots of Niger, and uh, in particular Niger, there is uh, uh, a program that we are talking about. But basically, we want to leverage technology to address the development goals. So I've seen that happening in India. So, uh, uh, so these are concrete things in agriculture, in education, in let's say development goals that India really can contribute a lot you know, to the transformation of our country. I think I'm not sure I'm going to want to put in here. Yet. I could not say you. I don't like it. Again. Is there a specific example you think that we must take to the future? There is so many new aspects. You know, it's not just infrastructure uh, in real uh, in uh, renewable energy in what. Uh, uh, one of our uh, participants is calling the Amul model, really, of, of um, uh, you know, working in the grassroots. Where do you think uh, the specific examples that are the role models, really, are? Uh, I mean, as far as me, there is a question. I mean, one for me, it's really focusing on, on knowledge, transfer of knowledge. I mean, Nisha is the youngest country on Earth. Uh, the median age in Nisha is 15. Okay, what we absolutely need to do is to create the platform, the condition that is going to make it easier for the young population to have access to the knowledge. And knowledge today is based really on technology. So, India is one of the leaders in that field. I was mentioning I was in Telangana, I want to the key hub in Telangana. There is, we, can, we can definitely have a meeting, a meeting between. Uh, India the textile on the I'm setting up an, uh, an innovation uh, and an innovation center. I, I can see a relationship uh, uh, being built around that for agriculture specifically and education because it's not the situation for different things. What sort of how can we quickly scale up this view and have uh, uh, some solution deployed rapidly. Uh, we need to create a uh, job, but we also need to improve the issue the government is going to make a little bit. Uh, this is uh, one example where you leverage technology right. in India and on the youth and then fill up the government. Interesting uh, knowledge partnerships, I think, are in the way. Uh, Mr. Pubu, if I could come to you next um, and get a sense. And before I start, could everyone just please mute their computers unless they are speaking? Because what tends to happen is the echo comes through uh, quite a lot. And I think everybody is facing a problem with the audio right now. Um, uh, uh, if, if I could come to you um, and ask... Uh, Really, um, uh, Ms. Lipumbu, that Namibia is one of the few countries that India has 
old ties with, close ties with. And there is a sense that whether it's the South in Africa, which of course is, you know, South Africa itself has such, a, 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 you know, high, a high cooperation with India compared to some of the other parts. But there's a sense that India's cooperation is with a few African countries. It is not with the entire continent. Is that something that you see changing over the years? Sorry, I think I was on mute. Um, uh, General VK Singh, um, obviously India and African countries have had a traditional um, vision together uh, for, for decades now. And even so, most would admit that there is a real gap with potential. India still doesn't have adequate diplomatic representation in so many countries uh, in Africa. Uh, trade is well below and is at a level where trade is not of the uh, of the value that we are seeing with perhaps other parts uh, of the world. Um, and particularly when it comes to finished goods, we're not seeing a kind of uh, leap. When it comes even to your subject, the infrastructure, uh, we haven't yet seen India develop in 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 the perhaps in the way that people had hoped. Uh, it would. Uh, with your own uh, experience of traveling to these places, where do you think the real progress has been made in the last few years? And where do you think we fall short? Roshni, first of all, let me uh, very emphatically state that uh, where India is concerned, relationship uh, with uh, African nations is uh, not only ancient, but it is also a very uh, progressive relationship which has matured over the years. If we look at uh, trade that uh, you had uh, mentioned, uh, between uh, 2001 to 2014, it uh, grew from 7.2 billion to 78 billion till it stabilized at about 69.7 billion in 2018-19. For Various reasons, the crude prices went down, etc., etc. The second thing is that where developmental assistance is concerned, India's maximum developmental assistance goes to Africa. Now, we have a model which is different than a model which, uh, let's say, China follows. Our model is very simple. A developing nation. We understand the needs of developing nations. We understand the needs of least developed nations. And therefore, whatever we do as part of our developmental aid, we ask the country, what do you want to do with your people? want? Okay, you want transmission line because you want to bring electricity from one place to another. Okay, fine. In that case, have you created capacity for electricity in that area, whether it is thermal or whether it is idle or now solar. And that is why you find that today, large number of African countries are becoming members of the solar alliance. And in this model of ours, we give a choice to the country that here are the number of companies of ours which do work. Choose whichever you want. Choice is yours. We will source the material from you. And we will source the labor from you. Now, 
the other model which the Chinese follow is that they will go to the country A and they say, hey, we will make this for you. And uh, th this will come up in uh, so many billion dollars or so many million dollars. And uh, the resources come from China. The steel comes from China. The cement comes from China. The labor comes from China. The only thing that the country gets is a finished product and a bill. That's a different model altogether. And therefore, most of the nations in Africa prefer developmental aid from India, which is on terms which are really attractive. Very attractive terms. I and mean, if I was to give you uh, some uh, figures, uh, which uh, I have, uh, we are the second African continent is the second largest recipient of our overseas assistance. 181 credit lines are on highly favorable terms. Amounting 41 countries, total amount is approximately $11 billion. And we would continue with this. In the COVID times, we find that since things are going down, economies are suffering. There is uh, agreement in G20 that we must give loan waivers. India is part of it. So I, for one, would uh, not agree with you that India has not done enough because if let's say a country doesn't want a road, we are not going to build a road. It is a need of the people out there. And when they say, okay, we want an ICT uh, a lab, we will train their people and they will run it. If they want assistance of one or two people to supervise, most welcome. But we want the country to come up and look after the resources. Unfortunately, the type of trade that we have with African countries is in terms of minerals, crude, and, and things like this. And this needs to be diversified. And what I would say is that COVID has also provided great opportunity for trade diversification. Your uh, APIs, which are used for pharmaceuticals, I think is a great opportunity for Africa to set up investments for Indian pharmaceuticals who can manufacture APIs which India can source from Africa and it's a profitable venture. Therefore, I think there is a need for African leaders, Indian leaders, African businessmen, Indian businessmen, students from both the sides to sit together and work out as to what do we want. Let me also give you another example. We run a, a program in the Ministry of External Affairs for entrepreneurs. It is run by one of our chambers. Uh, I attended a, this program. There were equal number of uh, students from Africa and equal number from India. And this was the finishing this year. And I asked how many people have worked out a joint venture? 80% people would worked out joint ventures to be set up between India, Indian new entrepreneur and an African new entrepreneur. And I think it's a very, uh, you know, very positive sign. The, uh, at times, we do not get the correct feel because it, it, the spread is very big. And that is why uh, you, you, you would recall that in 2015, when we held the IFS3, we called each and every country from Africa. We didn't restrict ourselves to the old rule that only 15 will come. 41 heads of states came. So I think there is a great amount of uh, synergy. Not that it has reached a peak. I think the peak is yet to be reached. And therefore, what is needed is our people to sit together and work out what more can we do, not what we are doing, but what more can we do. And if that is that is the aim, then you will find a sea change in the way we do business with Africa. Okay, um, thank you very much for that very very cogent uh, presentation. We are getting a lot of questions in 
um, from a lot of the people who are in the uh, discussion as well. And uh, uh, Minister Lipumu, I'm so sorry about not getting this audio working, but we are seeing your uh, your messages. So whatever you'd like to uh, uh, put, uh, put write down, uh, I can incorporate them in the conversation. Um, but Minister Singh, I do I do want to say that um, while we are talking about the Indian model as different from, say, the Chinese model. At the end of the day, the aid levels are less than a third of what we are seeing China put in uh, for development. I wanted to ask you, um, and you, you alluded to that when you said APIs, how much do you think the coronavirus pandemic is going to um, affect ties um, uh, between India and African countries, as well as where are those uh, potentials for uh, in a in a post COVID world, if you like, we have someone uh, writing in uh, Thomas Wu, who I think is the founding partner of something, but I, it, it's it isn't opening up. Who says at this moment India should be part of the African COVID nineteen response fund to show their contribution in a way that Europe has been doing. Uh, Germany just became one of the te- top ten investors in Africa. He points out, and this is something India should be actively looking at. Uh, your response. See, it is not only the uh, COVID fund, it is also how India has reached out to various countries, various leaders to ensure that what they require can be modulated and provided. See, it's uh, one thing to say, okay, let's create a basket and that's the end of it. I think uh, a better uh, system is you do it bilaterally. And I think that is what India is working on. Bilaterally, country A requires this, we will give you this. Country B requires something else. We will provide those resources so that you can do well. And I think this is how we want to proceed so that we can ensure that the needs are met. And it is, it is not wasted out uh, in a manner. See, you provide a sum of money Somebody decides, okay, let's equally do it. I, th- I think that won't be correct. There are least developed countries, there are countries which are developing. We need to look at all of them in a manner in which it is need specific. Can't hear you. I think you should unmute your, your yeah. Um, uh, my apologies. Uh, and, and we have this comment from Minister Lipumbo as well um, from Namibia saying we need to solidify relationships on energy, automobiles, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, uh, banking, ICT. These are essentially are the, you know, the, the new world um, uh, avenues of uh, cooperation. Uh, Minister Ibrahima, would you agree? Is that Niger's um, uh, experience of perhaps the difference between uh, investment from India and the investment from China, that India's investment has, in fact, been on point about specifically what Niger's needs are? Uh, I, I think to, 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 to some extent, I mean, definitely, I mean, I, I, I can tell you maybe one uh, uh, last example was last year in Niger hosted the African Union head of state meeting. And uh, so there was a need to have uh, a part of the infrastructure available not only for that meeting, but also uh, beyond that. And uh, yes, India came forward and actually uh, the Muhammad Gandhi Center was built uh, for that uh, particular. So this is uh, definitely uh, uh, something concrete, something uh, that was much needed. And, and in, in, in other areas as well, even the, uh, uh, maybe the training that I mentioned earlier, I mean, that's how it, uh, it's happened. But however, uh, I, I think well, they need to be, in my view, some sense, some sense of urgency. I'll just give you uh, 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 just one example. For the past, uh, maybe I've been in, 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 in this position for, for slightly over three years. For the past one and a half uh, years, I've been trying to get something tangible, concrete, uh, uh, starting with India. And we still have not done, done it yet. I've traveled to India twice, once with the president during the solar uh, uh, meeting. And then last year, I, I, I was in India just before the elections. I was both in, in Delhi and in Telangana, as I mentioned. 
I contacted the local embassy here, and it, it was something simple that they wanted. Uh, as I said, um, at least for Niger, and I think that's probably uh, true also for many countries. It's really about, for us, it's about uh, uh, addressing our development goals. Uh, it's really about delivering services and key services around healthcare, around education, around uh, access to clean water and things like that. And uh, we need to leverage technology for that. I, I don't see, at least as far as Nigeria is concerned, any better partner when it comes to IT than India. Uh, uh, why? Because uh, there are a lot of similarities in some regions of India with Niger. So, for example, when, when you look at the way India has uh, gone ahead and uh, introduced, you know, this uh, uh, unique identifier, you know, the sort of social security number, and then to use it, you know, to address uh, 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 some specific need, the, 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 what you call it, the, the aid that is going to the population so that it goes straight to the uh, to people. These are uh, similar thing that we want to do. We have a, a fairly uh, large country who have pockets of populations. We don't have enough roads. So I want to leverage technology for that. So I was looking at trying to uh, establish you know, a, a, a relationship there where maybe India can have maybe some technical assistance. Uh, being in Niger maybe for, uh, for two or three years to not only work with us, but also train our people so that we can uh, quickly, in a cost-effective manner, you know, address those. These are uh, really what is most of the value. It is on knowledge again. It's not on building uh, only infrastructure because infrastructure, yes, can help. But you need to make sure that people actually can take advantage of those infrastructure. So it's really knowledge, and I would like to see uh, uh, us maybe. Uh, uh, moving quickly. Sometimes I think just it's a, the bureaucracy on both hands. I'm not saying that it's on India hands, uh, but it's maybe the bureaucracy that is slowing things down. Maybe we can come up with some more agile uh, way of cooperating in some areas where things move fast. But but definitely, I think I, I will agree that the uh, relationship is target. And then maybe another thing that is maybe to India's uh, uh, advantage. Is, I mean, it's more or less like a quiet. Uh, a, a diplomacy because it doesn't have to be. There are countries yes who that make who make uh, so much noise when they they, they make a mention. I, I don't think that's the case of India. I think it's more uh, uh, long lasting and then also if, as it's more target uh, targeted. Sorry, it's really more result oriented. I do want to take your question to uh, Minister Singh in just a bit. Um, because it's an important one. The idea that while India has all the best intentions and we have these great conferences and we have this vision, uh, at the end, delivery is what counts and speedy delivery is what counts. But I, I do want to get a few questions to you as well um, because we're, uh, we're, we, we have one question from Mr. R.L. Narayanan. Now, one of the worries in Africa, and maybe this is a stereotype and you can tell me otherwise, is that African countries, um, and again, I'm generalizing across a continent, so I, I apologize again and again in this session because I understand we're dealing with, you know, uh, 50 countries. Um, uh, but, but there is this sense that African countries have allowed themselves up for plunder, particularly in uh, in even in the modern times. Uh, for example, Ms. R.L. Narayanan says while 134 billion flows in each year, uh, predominantly in the form of loans, foreign investment and aid, 192 billion is actually taken out, mainly in profits made by foreign companies. Um, uh, and of course, you know, things like tax evasion um, uh, and the costs of adapting to climate change. Uh, there has also been with your own country, there has have been these, um, uh, uh, if you like, concerns about the way the, you know, um, resources like petroleum, uh, for the pipeline that is being built by CNPC have, have uh, actually been outsourced, if you like. Uh, do you think there is a need for a kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 let me put it this way, Mald Maldivian ex-president Mohamed Nasheed had said, uh, all of us in the underdeveloped and developing world need to have alternative forms of uh, dealing with investment in our countries. We are not on our own equipped perhaps, 
uh, to um, uh, to uh, fight against. You know, if you if we have a need for some kind of uh, loan and investment, uh, we don't have the wherewithal just individually to insist on transparency, to insist insist on debt sustainability and uh, and I environmental protections. Um, but do you think that there is a need to in I include this in the India Africa conversation? That ways of sustainable um, investment of the kind Minister Singh spoke about are very necessary. So I'll put this question to you, which Mr. Narayanan has put is, uh, how do you deal with the fact that your outflows are going to be more than your inflows, uh, even if, uh, they, if the volume has in fact increased? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's certainly true. I mean, there is uh, what you need to look at uh, is that for quite some time, let's say, we were also uh, acting uh, in silence. So I think that didn't help. So in most of the conversation that we're having with uh, our partners, actually, uh, we're taking advantage of because we were not uh, uh, equipped. There were terms that we could not understand because these are new. That's why I was insisting that one area for us is really uh, it's on skills. We need to, let's say, uh, 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 have uh, uh, some of the requirements that are needed, let's say, to deal with uh, some complex uh, maybe relationships. So we need to start somewhere. Unfortunately, for some time, it has just been uh, uh, just, uh, let's say, uh, uh, unfair trading taking place. Uh, so that has to change, definitely. And we, we have to do our homework. Um, but what we need to look at when uh, uh, is that uh, now Africa has what it's called the Agenda 2063. Uh, or basically, we are trying to, 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 to have projects at continental level, if not at sub-regional level. And that helps us deal better with those type of challenges. Because now when you look at the project, not only uh, you, 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 you look at it really from a broader perspective, how uh, this project in particular fits into the, the, biggest, uh, the big agenda, that's one. And two... Uh, when you look at it lately, there have been some sort of uh, 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 organization that were set up either within the African Union or some of the regional uh, uh, entities like ECOWAS and, uh, and the like that actually now provide the support to countries uh, specifically. So we're looking at things from a more regional or continental basis. So that is going to, uh, to, to, to help us. Uh, and, and definitely COVID-19 is going to accelerate that. Uh, you have seen what the African head of state's response has been. Uh, uh, so around the president of South Africa, who is uh, currently uh, leading uh, the, uh, the organization, they have been meeting among the, the head of state to agree on a common approach. When How are we dealing with the debt, for example? We're trying to deal with it at the continental level, not uh, uh, at a uh, country uh, level, so which is going to... Uh, let's say, help us going in that direction. And then even um, procurement uh, on uh, masks and things like that, I mean, we are also uh, looking at doing it, you know, uh, uh, at a continental level. So, uh, uh, yes, I mean, we, uh, there's home, or we, we need to, to, to improve on our side. I think we're doing that. We're not there yet. And that's why we're insisting on focusing again on knowledge, on acquisition, because the more skilled uh, uh, people, staff you have within your government, the better you're going to be to negotiate uh, uh, those uh, contracts or, or or terms, you know, with various partners. Yeah, it, it, interesting. And you 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 said actually you, we need to deal with this on a continental level. And then Minister Lipumbu has also uh, referred to the fact that we need to use the African continental free trade area much more to enhance our cooperation um but uh, but uh, but having said that the the uh, minister singh if i could come to you india has in the last few years actually been walking away from free trade agreements we are not looking to join uh, the asean led rcep we are looking to renegotiate 
free trade agreements with everyone else. Uh, do you think that there is a chance that India would actually, because, you know, Minister Ibrahim uh, makes that point that fair trade is what is really going to take us forward, not this one way idea that there is going to be just one way of development assistance or aid. Um, and, and, and that will take the uh, symbiotic development, if you like, forward. Um, so uh, how do you deal with this? It's one thing for India to say, I don't want a free trade agreement with, say, ASEAN country, uh, with, uh, uh, with the RCEP or with uh, European Union. We're rethinking how to go forward. Um, uh, but, but what about with Africa? Do you think that India might be different in its approach to free trade agreements when it comes to uh, dealing with the ACFTA? See, at the moment, I think Africa is planning, uh, just like the European Union, a free trade between various countries that can move across the continent. Where does India fit into it? Yes, India can fit into it. And most of the time that we have done our FTAs, it has been from the point of view that the treatment becomes bilaterally or multilaterally equal. We are, we are still in a state where we are growing. We are coming to a, a level where the effect of uh, COVID is uh, bringing down all economies, including Indian economy. There is a hope and there is analysis by various uh, bodies in the world which say that we might recover earlier than the others. We have to see that. But yes, I think when it comes to the table, Seeing the type of things that we do with Africa, maybe it may become a very profitable uh, uh, venture between both African continent and the Indian Peninsula to do things which will benefit populations on both the sides. I do want to bring in, I know we're running out of time, but I do want to bring in that last point on security cooperation between our country uh, and the African continent. Um, you were part of a very unique uh, operation in uh, Djibouti some years ago when Indians needed to be brought out uh, from Yemen and, and Djibouti offered its, um, uh, you know, offered a, a base for you to uh, carry out those operations and to oversee those operations. India has in the last few years not only been contributing on uh, Africa's eastern coast to piracy operations, as well as uh, HADR, um, in, especially in the Indian Ocean region, uh, with places like Madagascar, Comoros, uh, as well, we're seeing much stronger ties. Uh, do you think this can be developed further? Do you think this is where uh, India sees a future? Or are we just, uh, you know, spreading ourselves too thin and, and this is not an area where you see growth? I, I see a great future in the, especially in the Indian Ocean Rim. And uh, I think uh, we are looking at uh, uh, countries which are willing to cooperate on this. It is not only anti piracy, it is so many things keep happening. Uh, these per se are not continental, these will have to be bilaterally arranged. And what both can do is what uh, we would uh, like to go ahead with. I mean, I'll be very happy uh, if uh, the nations come up to say that we would like to have a security agreement with you. And this is what we can do. This is what we want you to do. Uh, in this uh, forum, for me to say anything more than that would be incorrect because what you have, it's a point that has been debated for a very long time. With some countries, we have achieved certain things. With some countries, we are giving certain security assistance also. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a very old example. Uh, we had a military academy in Nigeria. We had a military academy in Ethiopia. After a certain period of time, we said, please take it over. Run it yourself. I think you are capable of running it. Now, I'm sure... That is what African nations would want with provision that, yes, where your security needs are concerned, 
if you require any assistance we are willing to give it to you minister ibrahim any thoughts of course niger is on the west uh, coast of africa but um we do have similar challenges when it comes to counter terrorism uh when it comes to stopping the flow of terrorism funding uh any thoughts on on a security partnership framework uh yeah yeah certainly i mean uh, actually niger is uh it, it's facing uh, facing really a big challenge you know in the lachad area uh with the boko haram and the uh, the rest and then uh, on the west with uh, the uh, instability happening in uh, in mali and then also we share borders with libya Uh, but what we're trying to do again in Niger is to have uh, 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 we, we, not a standalone approach, but with partnerships. So, for example, there is the G5 Sahel uh, uh, organization that, that was set up where you have uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, Niger, and uh, Mauritania and Chad, for example. And then through that, it's really through those organizations that uh, we. uh we're trying to uh, uh to, to 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 coordinate let's say some uh, military actions and then also some intelligence so so definitely i'm sure that there are conversations going on with uh, with india somehow uh, so both on the uh, let's say technical side and probably uh, financial side as well and and so this is uh, i think the world is changing uh, what we need maybe to uh to 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 retain on this matter is that what is happening in niger uh would concern india and any other place in the world because unfortunately terrorism has become international uh, 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 uh and we need to deal with it uh, you know globally if it happens somewhere let's put uh, together our resources to address it as early as possible because otherwise it become uh something that is just not uh, uh we cannot manage so definitely they need to be Uh, a broader cooperation there and Niger is definitely open for that the president has mentioned it so many times all right and minister singh if i could uh, just quickly get a response from you obviously uh, uh, you know uh, this is an ongoing discussion but on that question of delivery how long will it take india uh, india's potential is so high uh, and yet it is always on delivery that questions are asked do you think that there is a way especially because you, you run a ministry in which delivery is of the most important you know when it comes to road and and transport uh, do you think that there is a way to convince the world that actually india has changed on this aspect uh if i can take example of niger the minister would agree that whatever we have done there it has been done well before time especially the last couple of projects uh, i was uh, involved in uh, looking at them and uh, uh, swasne it is like this there are things which are going on a different uh, trajectory in india is a business the way we do our own digitization which assists the type of delivery that we want to do and i think as the things pass and we work bilaterally to say okay this is the time frame in which you will have to do and i can assure you we will do it before that i'm going to have to leave it on that very positive assurance uh, and and uh, there is so much more to talk about you know when it comes to india and africa on the international stage uh, as well but uh, some great ideas coming from all the ministers on the panel and i'd like to thank you uh, the idea of uh you know knowledge partnership showing the way minister lipumus uh, said again uh, stressed the point that our natural resources uh, should not be exported in raw forms and in order to finish these better we need india's help in exchange programs capacity building that's where the future really lies not in in just simply uh, you know the trade one way of 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 uh, of resources but in actually building uh, capacity um uh, minister ibrahim is saying we don't see a better partner than india when it comes to ict in particular um and and uh, the new possibilities that have opened particularly in the post covid world i know this is a discussion that will continue uh, and I, i and i really do want to uh, thank you all for joining us including minister lipumbu who hasn't been able to um have her voice heard but uh, but we've we've read you loud and clear so thank you so much for being innovative in these times and putting your 
views across, regardless of the technology. Uh, Minister Lipumbu, Minister Singh, uh, and Minister Ibrahima, thanks so much for joining us on this session. Thank you. Thank you.